Right, so iOS 16 is official, so let's delve into my favorite features and also some tips and tricks for you guys. And so yeah, let's just delve into it. So beginning with the flagship feature for this iOS update, and that's a new lock screen. So yes, after years of not giving us any sort of customization with the lock screen on iOS, Apple's finally letting us change the font, add widgets, add colors to the text and icon, and of course, have a foreground and background separation for your wallpapers, so that there's a smooth transition from the lock screen to the home screen. And yes, everything just feels polished, and I love how we actually have customization tools within iOS. And by the way, you can have multiple lock screens per focus profile, so let's say you have a work profile on your phone, this can have a less distracting lock screen without widgets and fewer notifications but of course when you go back home you can go back to your default lock screen with as many widgets and as many notifications. So yeah all these changes are great and by the way regarding notifications they have moved this to the bottom of the lock screen and this is a very nice change for the larger phones so that now you can easily reach your notifications. And talking about focus you can now filter content on specific applications when in focus modes so again Again, if you have the work profile on you can filter emails that are not related to your work and then they'll come back up when of course you're done with work. Now moving on to live activities, I have not seen any apps take advantage of this just yet, but essentially the concept of this is giving you a live update of matches or Uber Eats deliveries directly on the lock screen. And as someone who does use Uber Eats pretty often, I can see this being very convenient for of course tracking where my order is. Now iCloud shared photo library is also a pretty convenient feature because now the iPhone can automatically create a folder for your family and share pictures that are relevant. Though I do want to say there is a chance that sus images on your phone can accidentally be shared to this family group which would be pretty awkward. However you can now hide images and this will be a folder that's locked on the device and can only be unlocked via Face ID. We also get some basic feature upgrades we should have got years Years ago, for example, editing and undoing messages within iMessage. This is a godsend, though, of course. Do remember there's going to be a time limit. You can unsend and edit messages within 15 minutes. But either way, I'll take it. Finally, we have this feature on iOS. And also with the mail app, you can now undo and schedule emails. Again, very basic features, but I'm glad we finally have it. Now moving on to another big favorite of mine, this is Lyft Subject. So basically now I can long press on any image on iOS and it automatically removes the background. Now this is incredibly useful for making thumbnails because instead of me having to manually do it, the phone can now do it for me and it's surprisingly accurate. But also there is now live text quick actions. So for example, if you're abroad and you see some prices, you can long press on the price and the phone will automatically convert the price to your local currency. So yeah, this again is going to be very convenient. Dictation has got better and you can now speak in emojis. So if you say happy face emoji, the phone will recognize it and put a happy face in the block of text. And so yeah, this is pretty great. And also you can now type and dictate at the same time. So of course, if you make a mistake when dictating to the iPhone, you can now fix that by physically typing on the device. And for those who order many things with Apple Pay, you can track those orders within Apple Wallet now, which I think is going to be pretty great because instead of relying on a plethora of delivery apps, you can now see all your orders at a glance within the native wallet app. Now for those without Apple Watches, but want to join your friends in gamifying your fitness, you can now have the fitness app on the iPhone, so now this lets you close rings with the motion sensors on the iPhone instead. And yes, I've enjoyed tracking my rings on the Apple Watch, so the fact Apple's now giving us this natively within iOS is pretty great. Now for those who have medications, you can now track this within the health app, and while Apple's already the pioneer in terms of health features, this further extends that lead because I can see this being a game-changing feature for those who have medications. Now this is a new feature I use on a regular basis and that's Quick Notes. So yes, we saw this with the iPads and Macs, 
But now it's on the iPhone. So basically within any app, you can click the share button and that should give you a tab to add a quick note. And there you can jot down anything that comes to your mind. Now we have two smaller changes that in my opinion are game changers. The first thing is a search button at the bottom of the home screen, which I think is super convenient and gives you quick access to Spotlight. But also finally, the battery percentage in the top right is back on the iPhone and I've sorely missed this. However, I will say the new design is kind of confusing because while it does show you the percentage, the bar's full most of the time, so of course, that initially makes me think the battery's full, but of course that's not the case. So yes, I'm hoping Apple can fix that. Now the next feature, something Apple did promote with AirPods Pro 2, but this is available with older AirPods, and that's personalized spatial audio. So basically the Face ID sensors in the iPhone scans your face and ears. It's a pretty simple process, and then spatial audio becomes more tuned for your ears, and it's pretty great. Like honestly, I was surprised it made a difference. CS so yes, definitely do play around with this when you do update to iOS 16. Also regarding AirPods, you can now track individual AirPods. So if you lose one earbud, you can now track the location of that. And finally, let's talk about the most underrated feature, which is haptic feedback for the keyboard. CS so yes, after years of Android having this, Apple's finally given this to iPhone users and it makes a massive difference. Like I'm sure a lot of you guys know, the haptics with iPhones are absolutely fantastic. And so now using that for the keyboard really enhances the experience and it's something I've really appreciated. And I'm actually surprised Apple has this off by default, but it's within sound and haptics and this has to be turned on because it's a massive upgrade. Oh, by the way, forgot to mention this earlier, but there is a new UI on the lock screen for music, but also you can now connect two controllers to one iPhone. So for those who wanna play games with their friends on their iPhone, this is gonna be convenient. Also with iOS 16, there is now support for the Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons. Anyways, that's all my favorite features. Of course, there are a plethora of others I did not discuss, but overall I would say iOS 16 is a pretty big update and it's worth downloading it. Anyways, tell me in the comments below guys, what's your favorite iOS 16 feature? Anyways, thank you for watching guys. Make sure to like and subscribe for the latest Apple news and rumors. Check out the link above on details regarding the iPad 10 and on that note, see ya peeps.